Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benim. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, guys, want to first, right before we get into this here, let you know, uh, I have up here uh, our good friend here on Already Happened on his uh, Twitter account here where he posted Don Fang 41 nuclear solid-fueled road mobile intercontinental ballistic missile probably deployed near Tibet, China. Now, a lot of this uh, information I'm going to share with you and it is unconfirmed. In fact, every news we're going to speak about today is unconfirmed. I did make the mistake in the broadcast earlier when I first saw uh, Already Happens uh, tweet here. I first thought it was 41 of these uh, these intercontinental ballistic missiles had been deployed near Tibet. So I do stand corrected on that. Uh, but I did do a little bit of research on this once we actually got back into the office here just to try to get a better idea and a grip of what's going on with this. Uh, I did reach out as well to my good friend there. It already happened uh, just to double check some information with him on this. Uh, he has inside sources as well that has let him know that this has been deployed near Tibet. In the Chinese news, they are also speaking about this uh, as being deployed. People's Daily article revealed major news. The Dongfeng 41 missile has been in service. The word or should not actually be there in the translation of the Chinese language here. This is on uh, weedu8.net uh, forward slash wx. I'll post a link to this article here. It is in the Chinese language here. I'm using Google Translate to basically get a, a, a general translation of this. They are going into the Dongfeng 41, of course, the 31A, uh, uh, and, uh, and yet as well speaking about when this missile would actually be put into service. And according to the article, 2016 was when it was supposed to be put into service there. Um, it, it is very interesting. Bill Gates claims that this missile it was stolen technology from the U.S. The article speaks about that. Um, and he discredited China's military technology and continues to insist that China's multi-warhead re-entry technology was stolen from U.S. companies during the Clinton era. Now, what's interesting to note, though, this intercontinental ballistic missile is the longest-range ICBM in the world, and it has 10 warheads attached to it. So when it re-enters the atmosphere, there's a lot of different bombs coming down on you anywhere. But what I really began to focus on when I was looking into this article here as well, uh, another one that already happened also put out, uh, and I'll come back to the article in a second, and that is that Chinese Navy fleet is en route towards the Gulf of Aden. Uh, and that is so. We find this on the ing.mod.gov. Uh, Ministry of National Defense, the People's Republic of China, is saying that the Navy fleet left in a port of uh, Zongyang in southern, southern China's uh, uh, Guangdong province for an escort mission in the Gulf of Aden on Saturday. Now, let's look at a couple of issues here. If we think about what's going on around the Gulf of Aden, this is down by Yemen. And of course, in Yemen, we are seeing massive uh, attacks on the uh, Houthi rebels there, the Saudis, uh, many atrocities that have been committed there. In fact, it's kind of interesting that the U.S., uh, Obama administration wants to uh, really slam Russia and, and, and the Syrians for what's going on by taking retaking Aleppo. But at the same time, they are aiding with the, uh, the bombs and all the means for the Saudis to be able to obliterate uh, the people there inside of Yemen. Now, another thing I find interesting as well about the Yemen case versus the Syrian case, in both cases, they say that the children are starving to death. In Yemen, the pictures that come out of there are the most horrific things you could ever imagine of children and starvation. It is very evident that the evidence there clearly shows that. In Syria... Although no doubt there were many children that were hungry there, we don't see the same effects of what the Yemeni uh, children were facing there inside of Yemen under the Saudi-led coalition attack there that is happening on, on that region there. But the question still begs to ask, the question is why are the Chinese uh, sending all these warships there? So the Chinese fleets have an escort more than, uh, it really just goes in statistics, but it says the fleet is composed of two missile frigates, a supply ship, two shipborne helicopters, dozens of special combat soldiers, and more than 700 seamen and officers. What are the Chinese up to? What is it about the intercontinental ballistic missile, their new uh, Defong uh, 41, uh, 
uh, excuse me, Dong Feng 41, this nuclear solid fuel uh, road mobile intercontinental ballistic missile. Why is this on its way or, or why has it been deployed near Tibet? Uh, and then again, how many of them have been deployed in this region? Uh, at first, I did make the mistake that it was 41, but that wasn't the case. But nonetheless, it still is something that is going on. Very concerning, and I don't know the answer to that as of yet, but we'll try to find out more about that. Earlier, we shared with you this report as well. Uh, this was uh, what we first found it on uh, was in uh, actually a, let's see, uh, South Front is who we caught the article on. From what I understand, it actually originates so from 21st century wire, according to the report here. That, uh, but it even goes further back than that, from what I'm understanding at this point now. Uh, but at least 14 U.S.-led coalition military uh, advisors have been captured by the Syrian special forces in a bunker in the city of Aleppo, according to media reports. Now, Volatar.net, is uh, that's where it originated from. The event allegedly took place in the morning of December the 16th on 2016, according to Volatar.net. They are the original source of the article. Uh, doing a little bit of searching around in the Russian language, I was able to pull... Uh, this article up here from uh, warfiles.ru, uh, who's also reporting the same, uh, uh, the article here, it is in the Russian language, again, translated via Google right now. Aleppo, uh, CAA officers detained 14 U.S.-led coalitions that supported the insurgents. Uh, it, again, they have named them. This, these names appear, of course, uh, on a Facebook page from what we're understanding, uh, including a U.S. and Israeli a member of the special uh, 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 high-ranking officers that are that are part of the coalition of the United States. Now, it's not a verbatim copied story in the Russian article here, uh, but it is very similar to the way the other story is written. They're also sw uh, citing in the French language from Saeed Halal uh, Al Khafari. Uh, which is actually from that original report that I said that was on Volatire.net, which is a French language article there. So they're quoting from there where he says, this is one more confirmation in that regard there. Now let me just kind of back up on this here. According to warfiles.ru, they're using the article from Volatire.net, let me just click on that for you so you can see it. It is French language, like I said. They're using that as a secondary source according to the Russian language source that I'm giving you here. As I said, this is one more confirmation. So the Russian source is not getting its information per se from there. It says, in addition to the above, a Syrian journalist, Halel al-Khafari, said that the, according to him, uh, they were captured NATO officers of the number of member states, including the United States, France, Germany, Turkey, as well as Israel. Here is the statement translated from French. He says, due to the information received, the Syrian authorities have found NATO headquarters of senior officers in the basement of East Aleppo and, capture, and captured them alive. Some names have already been given by some Syrian journalists, including me, that's the guy there, Saeed, uh, who did that, uh, states which were including uh, uh, those nationalists from the United States, France, Britain, Germany, Israel, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Qatar, and so on. In light of their nationalities and their rank, I assure you that the Syrian government was very important to catch them and present them in a direct negotiations with those countries that are trying to destroy them. So at this point, they are being held as prisoners from what we can see there, or as it's been stated in one report I've read, they're detainees. Uh, it goes on to say, if the messages from East Aleppo is accurate, it may also help to explain the hysterical behavior of the part of the U.S. State Department and foreign U.N. officials who demand an immediate ceasefire despite the fact that 99% of East Aleppo has been released by the Syrian government forces. Earlier, German Foreign Ministry lodged an application for the smooth evacuation of Aleppo. All right, so this is what's going on there. And again, uh, warfilesru also reporting this. And as you can see, the buses that are lined up there on the bottom there of the image here, let me just kind of pull that up for you there. 
We know also that uh, we've been seeing in reports already as well, the buses that were set on fire. Again, um, uh, same uh, news uh, article here in Russian there, in Idlib met militants from Aleppo, heavy fire and homemade napalm. They began to burn and bomb these buses here. It says, last week, Syrian government army with the direct support of the video uh, conferencing Russia was uh, completely liberated the city of Aleppo to minimize losses among civilians. The Syrian government offered militants remain in the city's so-called moderate opposition, free passage to the city of Idlib the main town of the moderates. But what happened was they began to torch the buses. Uh, actually, there the, the video here, and I might be able to pull this back up for you. I don't know. Let me see if I can try to reload this real quick. Um, we actually have the video footage here of the green buses that were, be, that were being used for the evacuations that were being burned and the celebra celebration of the, uh, of the insurgents there that were actually burning the buses, and now they've actually, uh, this is no longer working here, uh, but you can see that they were burning there. And I think one of the reasons why they've removed the video, or at least they're making it to where you can't see it, is because the uh, video clearly does show the militants uh, rejoicing over the burning of the buses there. So very interesting uh, indeed. Uh, so anyway, moving right along here, Canadian woman among seven killed in a shootout in Jordan. Uh, this was uh, being reported by CNN News, uh, among many others that we've already picked up on this earlier. Uh, a Canadian woman is among seven people killed Sunday in Jordan as unknown gunmen fired at police officers at various locations, including an ancient castle popular with tourists. Jordanian state television said four policemen, two Jordanian civilians, and the Canadian woman were killed as a gunman fired at police in three areas. A shootout was still uh, going on as late as Sunday afternoon. And don't forget, guys, we have reported here on Israeli News Live before in our prophetic broadcast that Jordan is next on the list as far as prophetic-wise of a country that's going to be in turmoil. And that's something that's not happened as of yet, but now we're seeing the early stages of it, so it's, it's next on there. Uh, by the way, the standoff did end. It says uh, in the BBC is reporting Canadian among seven dead in the Kharkouk shooting. Uh, but the gun attack in a nearby Jordanian city of Kharkouk have left seven people dead, including the Canadian tourists. But the, the situation did come to an end. Um, anyway, moving right along, one more breaking story that was coming out. Uh, I hate this site because they put the nastiest uh, advertisements on here. But anyway, this is on dailystar.co.uk. A three-year-old boy was shot and killed in a road rage gun attack uh, that happened outside of J.C. Penney. Uh, that is in, gosh, what was the name of that town right there? That is actually in a, um, um, well, let me just give you a little bit of the article here, and that'll, that'll bring the name of this place out again real quick. Let me just see. Uh, the boy was on a shopping trip with his grandma in Little Rock, Arkansas, when they pulled up to a stop sign. Moments later, a driver, driver apparently angry at the, uh, at the holdup, in other words, uh, the, the traffic, the little old woman not going fast enough, just opened fire onto her vehicle. Uh, the grandma was not uh, injured, but the little boy uh, was shot and was pronounced dead at the hospital later. Just, just a sad thing. I'm sorry, guys. I try not to let that top come down. Whoa, gosh, and it's trying to make itself come down. I apologize. Let me just get rid of the thing. I don't want to see that at all. Anyway, um, very sad, very sad situation. Also, too, just quickly here, what, it's actually a conversation I was having with a friend of mine there on already happened there. He's also saying that Russia as well has been doing deployment uh, of the ICBMs, which we were aware of that already, but that's just another update for you. These are things that are breaking, guys, uh, just constantly around us. We'll try to keep you up to date. A lot of serious information. I'm Stephen Benet. You're watching Israel News Live. Thank you.